Uh, hello, my name is Victor Kisley. I'm from Wargaming.net, and yes, we make World of Tanks. How long has the game been in development? Uh, so it will be four years when we started. Yeah. Uh, before that, we had been, ma been making strategy games for like, 11 years. Yeah. We made a lot of good titles. Uh, strategy, real time, turn based, hardcore, a little less hardcore. But the you know the boxed game, the retail PC gaming business, we have to admit, is dying off. Right. It's uh, it's no longer the viable in the economical sense yeah. because of piracy. Right. And that's how I put it. Five thousand years ago, they sell products on the shelves in, in you know in biblical bazaar. Uh, places. Right now we're looking at a digital product. A computer game is a digital product, right? Yeah. And they still keep selling it on the shelf like 5,000 years ago. Yeah. It's against civilization <laughs> kind of approach. Yeah. Digital stuff has to be distributed digitally, right? Yes. So that, that's why Steam, you know, Steam yeah. uh, by Valve, Valve yeah. is doing so great. Basically overtaking the retail PC and Macintosh sales. But that's again, there's another shortcoming to that. You have to buy a $50 or 30 pound, uh, 50 euro box first to bring it home, to open up, and then you can see what's inside and enjoy or not enjoy the game uh, for the next uh, 10, 20, 40 hours. Uh, that's why we, we believe in MMOs, especially free to play MMOs. It's uh, something you download to your computer free and you can play for free as long as you want. And only if you really like the game, only if you have friends, only if you're already a part of a clan, then you might consider certain microtransaction options to boost your, I don't know, progress in the game, to give you a little bit of an edge uh, on the battlefield, but really the keyword will be a little bit. Yes, uh, we, we believe in this model. So far, for our game, it works brilliant. Like, World of Tanks has like 3 million of players across the globe, in, in Russia, in Europe and America, and a little bit of China. So 3 million is an impressive number. Uh, most of those people play the game for free, always, they never pay anything, no. but we're happy with that. We have the community, we have the critical mass, certain percentage does consider it appropriate to give us some money for those little improvements. That's how we, that's how our business operates. So, how much do you charge for a typical microtransaction? Uh, unlike other MMORPGs, traditional fantasy ones, yeah. we don't have so-called virtual item shop. Okay. The reason is, World of Tanks is for the boys. Everyone with X chromosome from 6 year old to 60 year old can enjoy the game. We, we, we have players literally from 6 to 60 years old, right? And uh, who likes shopping? The answer would be ladies <laughs> do. Who hates shopping? The answer would be guys yeah. do hate shopping. So that's why we don't have traditional item shop where you can where you can browse through hundreds of those virtual items. We, we rather kind of sell you gold which lands into your virtual account and then while playing the game, before going into a particular battle with a particular tank, you might consider, okay, let's let's load some couple of golden bullets or uh, let's buy this land lease premium gasoline oil to give you 5% horsepower boost or something like this. So basically we transaction maybe like let's say 10 or 20 dollars but that money is enough for the whole month or even two months spending a little bit here, a little bit over there inside the game where you need it. If you don't need it, you don't spend it. Uh, if you need it, let's assume before a championship battle or before yeah. a clan fight for the clan wars, fight for Moscow. For the, for the honor of your clan. Yeah, yeah for the honor yeah. of your clan, for yeah. your statistics. You, you, in, well, most of the games you play for, for fun. Yes. And you don't need those golden bullets, but yeah, if it's if it's the finals of a championship, you probably might want to load five or ten golden bullets. Because I know, I know there's currently an issue with EVE Online, where they're charging 
uh, like $68 for like in-game items and there's like a, a whole kind of riot thing going on because people don't want to be paying that kind of money. Uh, yeah. wh wh when did that start? Uh, I read about that this week. So All I, right. I, I, I don't think, uh, the example I was given was $68 to buy like a monocle, which you can only see on your, in your character when you're in your quarters. It's not even, you can't even use it in the game, you know? It's <laughs> you know what is funny? Uh, Iceland, you know, we have our statistics for all the countries, Iceland has the highest uh, per capita players world of tanks. They're like 3,600 per million. Right. And this is the highest saturation in the world. And that's why we know the reason, because most of EVE Online, not only players, but developers themselves, do play our game and right. they whenever we are trade shows we always say hi they have their own t-shirts we have our own t-shirts but we we hug we say hi thank you blah 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 so i might have an idea why that happened recently because you know <laughs> they play our game but that's my personal uh, innuendo right it's, yeah. it's not official no, no, no. but I, I i i think there were certain rules behind that so they saw how we did monetization, like item monetization, in a hardcore uh, combat competitive game, and probably they followed a couple of our ideas. In the first place, we were inspired by EVE Online many years before in, um, in terms of how to make a really enjoyable hardcore PvP game. That, that's we have to mention that. But now. It seems like they kind of are inspired by some of our uh, little things. Yeah. Uh, they just need to do it right. Yeah. It's not about selling stuff and making zillions of money forever. It's about doing it right. We don't charge $68 for anything. There's nothing in World of Tanks you can buy for $68. It's usually $0.05, cents, $0.02, cents, $1, $5, $10 is this monthly premium account. It's not a subscription, because they do have subscription in the first place. Premium account just gives you 50% experience boost, and that's it. It's not give you any battlefield advantage. It's just when you are working professional, you come back from work, you don't have much time to grind. So premium account gives you opportunity to level up faster. So they need to do a little more of their homework, I guess. Okay. If they ask me, I'll tell them uh, how to do it. Yeah, I suppose subjects of posting items inside the game. Can you tell us about any exciting updates coming out? Updates. Uh, this is the truth. World of Tanks is released now in, in uh, April, I believe. But this is just the beginning of everything. Whatever we have now is going to be, from the game standpoint, going to be doubled and tripled and quadrupled uh, within the next year, two or three. The game is scheduled to leave for at least five years, but most probably like seven or ten. But we're not going to be stopping development anytime soon. So it's about new tanks. We will end up with 500 unique models. Right now we are around 200. We're going to add French lineup very soon in, in autumn and goes uh, Britain, of course, will we'll get its 50 tanks and tank destroyers and artillery represented in the game. And then we'll follow the Japanese. It's very exotic kind of tank warfare yeah. they offer, but for the sake of the game, it will be, it will be fun. We we'll have those maps. Uh, right now, we're releasing a new map approximately every six, seven weeks. We're going to cut it down to four weeks, one month. New maps. We right now we're developing North American landscapes, jungles, some island warfare, African. Because we have those clan wars, and we need maps which represent different parts of our planet. Yes. And remember, World of Tanks is not a precise uh, reenactment of World War II. So it's it's not campaign based. You don't see Normandy landing for zillions of times. <laughs> right? It's it's about a competitive PvP team uh, fights. We win teams of 15 versus League of 15. We just happen to be with World of Tanks. Very detailed, very precise, very authentic, but it's about having PvP uh, competitive fun, not reenacting World War II. So that's why you will see Russian tanks in the jungle. How close are the actual tanks? Do you measure all the maps and actual tanks? When it comes to tank models themselves, they are freakishly authentic. And 
nothing prevented us from hiring a couple of very knowledgeable historical and you know buffs who spent their lives even before all the things they have been spending their lives in museums, archives, reading all sorts of books, browsing through the internet, reaching for uh, rare blueprints uh, and stuff. So we, we don't have a lack of uh, resources. At the end of the day, you just go to a museum like this one, or Kubinka in Russia, or to a private collection somewhere in America, and if you need to do measurement, you just measure that, right? So all the tanks are authentic. You know, three million people out of which a couple of thousands are die-hard tankers, they would not allow us to have the hatchet or the barrel in the wrong way. Okay, yeah, we, of course, we, yeah, we, we did a couple of mistakes here and there, but all of those, most of those were corrected because of player complaints and they, they usually get the evidence in front of yeah. us, okay, right. So, so, so right down to things like armor thickness, at the front and rear, that kind of thing is all yeah. reflected. Uh, this is absolutely reflected, but uh, in the relative terms, because in the game, of course, uh, during the five or ten minutes computer tank battle, you cannot reflect all the realities of realistic tank combat. You know, real tank combat is totally different, and there is no computer game which reflects any sort of real combat precisely, right? You, you have to have some limitations in a computer game, but relative armor is reflected historically correct. Okay. Uh, and we also try to program the uh, environmental and uh, ecosystem uh, realistic, photorealistic parameters like ricocheting, uh, armor penetration, yeah, rear, side, frontal armor, the slopes. In our game you can damage the tracks so the tank is immobilized. You can aim for the driver, like with a smaller shell, like you if you can't penetrate the tank's armor, you can use highly explosive to kinda of make an explosion in the driver's uh, area to meet him so the, the yeah so the tank will be slower or the, the gunner or the commander or radio man which just basically destroys your radio. Uh, you can hit the engine compartment, you can jam the turret all sorts of bad things you can do to a tank or one of tanks. You don't necessarily kill it with one shot. We believe in PCs. Uh, I'm, like uh, many many years ago, I started visiting you know E3, GDCs, uh, and all the lectures were about hey PC is dead, the consoles are coming, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii. Who needs that you know chunk of rabbit stuff? No, PC was there, is there, and will be there forever. MMOs actually is a good group. Right now, like the PlayStation and uh, other Wii guys are literally biting their elbows because they still keep this 5,000 year old shelf space uh, business model. Good luck to them. Uh, it's PC, everything's online, everything's social. You can download, free to play, uh, web presence and stuff. And everyone has a PC for work this or that way. There are certain countries like Russia, like Germany, like Scandinavian countries which are heavily PC. Anyway, you have to have a PC for your MS Word. Well, by saying PC, I mean also Macintosh or your Photoshop. You, you have to do some job on, on a PC. And yeah, by the way, you can also play free to play game like your things. It's good. And China, they even don't know what consoles are. Have you got any plans maybe to do. Um uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, philosophical concept. Even a six-year-old boy, after playing World of Tanks for a couple of hours, can come up with a meaningful list of our sequels. That would be modern tanks, of course, battleships, of course, war planes, of course, uh, helicopters, uh, and of course, big walking robots. Right. <laughs> the point is, right now we are at the point that. Uh, when it's not about coming up with authentic original ideas, everyone can come up with the next idea for a game. It's about quality and production. You know, World of Tanks is a so far like more than 10 million worth game, like the budget was 10 million in Eastern Europe. For, you know, cost effectiveness. Yeah. Uh, sort of in the West, that would be 30 million. 
and also you have to build the service component to that. It's community management, it's support, financial support, it's PR, it's marketing, it's going to the shows like uh, this 10 Fast. Bobby Gone is about meeting the players, it's about having the bulletproof uh, support and community management, which requires a lot of people, lots of investment. We right now realized that no longer we can support Western players out of Eastern Europe. That's why we have open offices in Berlin and in San Francisco. We are having dozens of local professionals to handle support and community and PR and marketing and advertising. So it's not only a game, it's a service and it's all very expensive to produce, uh, promote and maintain. So that's why, yeah, all those ideas are good but we cannot stretch ourselves to, to be producing five titles at the same time. So now we have all the tanks, we have announced all the four planes, which will be similar to all the tanks, naturally about you know, dogfights, World War fighters, bombers, dive bombers. Uh, yeah, we, we, we would be lucky if we can produce two, maybe three games at the same time. More than that, that would be a suicide. Right now our company is more than 400 people and one year ago we were 120 people. This is X4 growth in a year. Any business would be frightened at such, at such growth rate. So we have to be professional, we have to be realistic. So right now World of Warplanes are being developed in a partnership studio with which we have a relationship. We overview and monitor and supervise everything, game design, conceptual design, graphic style and everything. But uh, Minsk team, the core team, still World of Tanks and will be with World of Tanks pipeline, production pipeline for the next couple of years. So top level gameplay, the end game of World of Tanks is Clan Wars. Clan Wars, it's a global domination uh, like grand strategy. Think of uh, Hearts of Iron or Total War series. You have the globe divided into small territories. So let's say Sicily is a good representation of one uh, territory. Yeah. So there are hundreds of those and we have clans. In World Tanks we have clans. One clan is 100 people. In Russia we have 6,000 clans. In the West uh, it's still counting in uh, hundreds. But they're, they're, yeah, they're building up and growing. Uh, we launched Clan Wars in Europe and America about one month ago, and we already get some uh, bloodshed on the on the map. Rules are very simple. Clan 100 people, one person can bring one tank in a battle. The clan commander uh, plays a turn-based strategy with chips, just like casino-style chips. Yeah. And basically, every day he moves. 15 chips to adjacent territory he wants to attack. Uh, he has 100 players on his clan, so he has 100 chips, so he can do multiple attacks. Also, he has to allocate chips for defense, defense yeah. of course, of, of the uh, direction of more likely enemy attack. At the end of the day, all those, move, uh, all those strategic moves are calculated and battles are assigned. So, clan members have to be at a certain time in the evening uh, at their computers. The battles start automatically, the clan leader distributes his guys among, let's say, two, three or five battles his clan is having tonight. Yeah, it's just a tank battle with no limitation whatsoever. Everybody brings the best equipment he has. Who wins takes territory. We do not want to reinvent the bicycle with this one. So rules are very simple. Think risk, right? Yes. It's, yeah. it, it's simple. It's all about how coordinated the clan is, how good of a diplomat you are, because all the diplomacy happens behind the scenes. Phone calls, Skype, I don't know, personal meetings. That's a big deal of diplomacy. You know, those multiple attacks. Maybe you, know, you don't need so many battles tonight. So you have a couple of secret uh, agreements with these and that guys so that you can concentrate all of your attacks in, in one direction to the worst of your enemies. But of course, the bigger your empire grows, the more neighbors you have, the more people want, yeah, want a piece of your territory, the more discontent you have inside your own ranks, the younger guys want to fight juicy battles, but they get to guard, defend, like, real rank provinces. So, plants tend to break up from time to time, disrespecting evil line. It's never anti-corporation warfare across 
galaxy, so we don't have stellar systems, instead we have territories, like on the map of Europe, and Asia, North America, but it's the same, it's the same stellar galaxy, skin warfare with backstabbing, coming together, alliances, secret alliances, obvious alliances, official alliances, uh, clans breaking apart, lots of quarrels going on, inside clans, outside clans, we do not control this game anymore, and that's the beauty of it, I cannot tell what's going to happen tomorrow or the next week, it's like, uh, think civilization, any civilization, when you play this grand strategy, when you finish, you have this replay option, where you have the grey map, and then boom, the your first city, and, your yeah, second yeah. city, then you, you discover French Empire, then this green spot of the uh, Zuma's Empire, and then you can see that you now they collide, inter interfere with each other, then you wipe the French Empire out, and then right. somebody, then you discover the continent, and it's, it, it's all happening like uh, really fast forward. The same for all the tanks. If you record every day's changes on the global map, that will that will be like civilization replay. But unlike civilization or even total war, uh, hundreds of thousands of people are kind of playing this game. So whatever happens, you cannot predict or control. With 100,000 people, 100,000 people, they do they do whatever they want and it always go in uh, unpredicted ways. Uh, alliances happen, they break apart, they get wiped out. It's so exciting. So um, when you're talking about, for example, let's say attacking Sicily, uh, ultimately, will the terrain of each region be reflected in the map? Right now we have 25 maps, all authentic and different, represented in the game. Of course, this is not enough to represent the whole Earth. That's why our map designers currently are working on, uh, as I mentioned, jungle maps, North American setups, uh, Chinese maps, Japanese maps. Yeah, our ultimate goal is to have representation of any significant terrain type, uh, including uh, South America. Yeah, so, so attacking a Memphis region. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. You, you have, we have a couple of mountainous yeah. uh, maps uh, in our game. So yeah, you, you get to fight a monastery or mines or the mountain pass maps. That sounds cool. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Alright. And, and this game, well, Clan Wars, this one is going to be going full wrap up. Yes. I think that's going to be probably no winner. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Cool. Never ending war. You have to give it a go. You have to have a clan, yeah? Yeah, you have to have a clan. <laughs> yeah, but your group is big enough to, to field like 50 guys. Yeah, yeah I would They can so. bring friends. Yeah. Most of them are in the US, but I'm sure we can sort something out. Yeah, there are ways around barriers in the Atlantic Ocean and stuff. So you, you have to work a little harder to get your plan. That's where all the tanks lost. Because those random battles, everyone has as given. Well, they're fun, you can play a lot of those, but they're not coordinated. You don't get the, the juicy part. The juicy part is when you have 15 guys fighting for the motherland, life or death with the best equipment they have and well coordinated. It's like Counter-Strike on steroids. Right, one final question then. Um, I saw you got the Guinness World Record for the most number of users on the MMO on one server or something. Um, how many people was that? Uh, it's technically, it's a technical record. The thing is, most of the MMOs, like traditional RPGs, they have those shards, like three, uh, 5,000 players, yeah. 30,000 players. Those are separated ecosystem mostly. The beauty of all the tanks is that in Russia or in Europe or in America, each of those regions, they have one single ecosystem server, mm -hmm. and so, so that everyone can play with anyone at the same time, anywhere, whenever. And in Russia, we have 1.5 million people, which results in right now 1,055, 155,000 players at the same time, Moscow prime time, which is quite a tactical, uh, a technical challenge to, to any server class or system. So we broke the even lines record. They were somewhere above 60,000. Uh, we set up our record at 91 something. But while they were making the paperwork for that, they, they're quite bureaucratic 
<laughs> system. We were already more than 100 and now we have one and a half hundred thousand uh, players just in Russia alone. Cool. So it's yeah, it, it's a personal pride of myself and of, of our technical guys. We we managed to do that, but this is a principal marketing and promotional uh, point. In World of Tanks, everyone is in one ecosystem. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much.